Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick overview of the new particle force effectors that are included with uh, Ultimate VFX uh, 2.5 and onwards. So just jumping in, as soon as you import the package, uh, what you should see is just this folder, right? You should only see this folder, this extra stuff I do have in this project, but it's uh, not included with the download. And then if you just jump down to scripting, effects, and particle effectors, you'll see that there are three force effectors at the moment, attraction, turbulence, and vortex. So let's just start playing with these and create a new particle system. Uh, I'm going to make this more easier to see just by changing a few of these values. So set the shape to sphere, uh, lifetime to 2, speed to 0, turn the size way down, and then maybe make about a thousand of these emitting per second. So in total it's going to be 2 since their lifetime is 2. Just reset this so it sits, and then just edit it a little bit so it sits right in front of the camera or so. And, okay, so let's play this so we can start making some live changes. Okay, so you can obviously drag these in, but the easiest way is just to, and there's different ways you can set these up, by the way, but the easiest way is to just apply a force vector directly to a component with a particle system on it. So let's start off with attraction. Okay, and as soon as you add it in, you can see it's uh, working its, its uh, force thing. And let's set the radius to about uh, 5. By default, all of them have a, have a radius that just re reaches out to infinity, but uh, let's make this 5, and you can see how that, that works already, right? So anything that's falling within that green radius, all the particle systems for this component, all the particles for this particle system component get affected. So let's increase the force, right? You can reverse the force as well. And another... Another interesting thing you can do is, let's say if this was maybe like a wider field, right? You can easily, you can either offset it directly from here, or you can actually just move the transform uh, if this was on another object. So let's say this wasn't here, right? So uh, these are context sensitive. So if this was on another game object, and let's actually just copy and paste this. What you'll see is that any particle systems that are within range, so even if it was this one, right, get affected. Whereas if it was on the particle system itself, then it would only apply to that system. Whereas now it applies globally as long as it falls within this green range. So let's disable these because they're ugly in a way. But if I just move this around, right, it has the same same effect. So this could be cool. Let's let's reverse the force so it actually becomes a repulsor, just a slight repulsor with a small radius. You know, this could be used for, like, uh, attaching to a player who's moving through a bunch of particles, and instead of having collision for each of those particles, you could have something like this, right, where they move out of the way, or, you know, where they actually get sucked in if you kind of move this around. Right, so your imagination is basically the limit. Um, you can always mess around with these settings. I'm not going to go over all of them in this tutorial, just because this is for uh, just a quick overview. Uh, so let's re-enable that, and let's try another more interesting effect. Let's try the vortex particle effector. And all of these, by the way, you'll notice have GPU variants, which you can use if you really want to get that uh, speed boost. Um, but the limitation is whatever platforms are supported with the compute shader. So you can look up, uh, look that up on the Unity documentation. So generally, it's uh, Windows, um, some mobile platforms, Android, um, Xbox One, PS4, etc. Uh, so you can see right now it's very unstable, right? It's just kind of being flung outwards, and you can easily fix this by uh, limiting the velocity over lifetime, and maybe setting this to like 0.2, right? And then increasing the force. Now at this point, you can also add maybe a turbulence force effector, right? If you want to reverse the vortex, by the way, again, same thing, just add a negative and spin the other way. Um, you can also change the rotation the axis of rotation, for example. So if I set this down, I'll be able to see this red line, which is the axis around which it's going to rotate. So if I you know, change this like this, then it rotates like so. Right. So moving on to the turbulence force effector, let's turn this value up so we can see, see what's happening a little bit better. And just so it looks a bit prettier, let's swap out this default texture for something from UVFX, uh, UVFX like this uh, point 
additive sprite with a soft particle value of 1. Maybe turn the start size up a little bit as well. And there's different noise types you can add. Uh, the octave stuff only applies if you're using the octave variants. Now you can slow down the animation speed of the field, which gives you more stability. And you can turn the frequency down as well, so the slices are larger, and you have more broad strokes in your in your uh, noise field. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this, and you know, again, more tweaks you can add. For example, color by speed, right? So the faster it goes, the more maybe bluish it becomes, or red, right? To make some sort of an ember effect, uh, make this larger. So you can see the slower particles are white, or maybe the slower particles should be blue. It's even bigger, just so you can see. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with this, and it's... There's just so many combinations you can add to these, so many ways you can use them, and I'm going to be getting into more of that in um, further tutorial videos that focus on each individual effector at a time. So anyways, I uh, hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for watching, and yeah. Bye.